What's that? What's that? Something's eating you? Okay. Well, thanks for letting me know. I'm just joking, y'all. My planet ain't talking to me, but it does talk to me because the leaves can tell you what's chewing on them, which then can lead to how to treat for these certain pests. And so I was walking around my garden, I noticed there's a whole bunch of damage. And um, I figured it was a good time to just kind of maybe show like what the damage looks like for certain pests. And not all of it can be identified, but I do have at least three out here that I can clearly say this is what is doing it and this is how I'm gonna treat it. All right, so the first thing is hopefully we're lucky enough to see the actual pest on there and that's where we can kind of, and that's how I started learning this process. But then after that, over the years of seeing it over and over again, unfortunately I can't keep the pest out of my garden so I've learned and we may see some of the pests and we may not. These are my green beans and we're just gonna go ahead and knock two out right here um, and they're actually at different levels so if you come across and you see I mean clearly we've got some good looking leaves and then we have some not so good looking leaves and so this is indicative of Japanese beetle which is this is probably one of the easiest to tell just because you're more than likely gonna see the Japanese beetle on there and basically what I do for these guys is I come out here early in the morning and actually like right now they always seem to hit the top of my plants really hard so it's kind of hard to get to them smart little boogers so what I do is I come out early in the morning usually at this now because it's getting bad I'll come out in the middle of the day and then I'll come out again in the evening and I hand pick them and I don't have a jar right now, which is kind of my fault. I just walked out here, I was like, I'm gonna grab a jar, and I still didn't grab a jar. But I'll show you what I'm doing in the meantime, because I, I see a Japanese beetle. So all I do is I'll just hand pick them. They're pretty lazy. You just kind of got to pin them on, if I can get them. And of course that one gets away. But never fear, there's more. Oh, this one for real. Nope. Come on. There we go. All right, so we got them. So one, you can just squeeze them, get rid of them, or the other option, which I've been doing today and yesterday. Since it's been raining, I'm just taking them and throwing them right into this wheelbarrow of water. And you can see we've got a couple in there. Don't want them to live. So you can get rid of them that way. One thing I read is Japanese beetles can smell the death of other Japanese beetles and go to them, but I haven't witnessed that at all. And that's why just kind of dumping that water out every once in a while will definitely help. And neem oil treatments will help. Unfortunately, because we're in a rainy period, I can't do that. So sticking with the green beans, you see this right here? Do you see how this is all chewed like differently? Here, let me just pull this leaf. Do a side by side for you. So look at the difference in the chew patterns for the leaves. Leaves. So what this tells me could be potentially one of the worst pests we have. This is grasshoppers. And so what they do is they take big bites out of the leaves, they'll leave them folded up and you don't have those little holes in the middle. And that can be the worst part right there. So what we do for these is basically a lot of the same thing that we do for the Japanese beetles, except for, and that, this seems kind of gruesome, but as the year progresses later and later, you're gonna start seeing grasshoppers that are like this big out here. And they're, I mean, they are meaty little bastards. And so what I'll do is I'll actually come out with some shears and when I see them on the plant, you have to sneak up on them and you snip them. And you just cut, it, cut them in half. And that's really the best way I've found. I definitely do use the neem oil as well, but I don't think it works as good for those. But these guys right here, these, are a plague in your garden. I'm not even joking. This right here will decimate an entire plant in no time. So watch out for these grasshoppers. Now that we've beat up on the green beans a fair amount, we'll move on to something else. I do wanna just say one thing, usually the Japanese beetles come first and then the grasshoppers will come after that. So you can see up top there, we have a lot more damage 
from them. And then that was really the only leaf I saw for the grasshoppers, but we know that it's getting started. So in an effort not to totally beat up squash, I'm going to use my cucumbers as an example because I don't want to just go sit on the squash. Um, this one is really common, but it can be kind of confusing. So this right here, if you can see this pattern here, this is indicative of a squash beetle. Now squash and cucumbers, they, can, they get about the same pest. I mean, the squash vine borer doesn't go in there, but you do get the beetles and stuff like that. So just be on a lookout for those. And you've seen me kill them throughout this, you know, this season. Every single time I see one, I pick it. Um, I'm gonna come over here and look for a second and see if I can find one and show you what it looks like. Well, I can't find one, but they basically look like an orange ladybug. So if you see something that looks like a ladybug, but it's orange, pull your phone out and look it up before you get to destroying. I will tell you that when I first saw them, I just thought it was a variant of the ladybug and I left them and guess what happened? Total decimation. So just be careful of that. Um, hand picking is the best way to get the population under control. Um, it's the easiest, it's cheap, it's free. It is icky, but once you start grabbing, they are way less icky than grabbing the um, Japanese beetles because they are all scratchy and whatnot. But um, you just pick them, get rid of them, and you can kind of start to get the population under control because every one you pick, you're pulling out a reproducing adult out of the population. So that kind of helps. All right, so this next one, I actually saw it over there. So I want to give the bug a minute to just rest before I come over there and get it. I don't want it to fly away. But this is a damage that I've seen a lot on my plants and it took me a while to figure it out. And now that I'm starting to actually see the adults, I'm actually being able to put it together that this is what's causing the damage because it happens in stages. All of these different pests come in stages. So my squash beetle comes first and then comes my squash bug. All right, so I saw him over here. Here he is. So you can see the squash bug right here. Got him. So that's what they look like. They're nasty little buggers. And actually, ask and you shall receive. Here is the squash beetle. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, that one was full of juice, ugh. The um, squash bug, when you pinch it, when you kill it, it stinks, but whatever. So the squash bug damage, let me show you what that is. So you see these leaves here, and this is something that I've been keeping an eye on. I wasn't totally sure to identify it, but this isn't really the indicative part to me. This is what it turns into, but this damage right here, this is the squash bug damage. And so it'll come in and it just kind of sucks it dry underneath. So once you see this, you know that you have squash bugs in your garden and they're prevalent and it starts to spread rapidly. So this is all popped up in a matter of days here. You can see it starting here. And now again, cause they're so big, I actually like to hand pick them as well. They are disgusting to squish. They kind of have like a, uh, it's kind of like a minty, squashy leafy smell to it but you kind of get used to it it's the same with like stink bugs and stuff like that so yeah that's part of it now when we come over here to this crop we come over here to our sweet potatoes and i'm not sure if this is what's going on a quick look can tell but all of these little holes here these could very well be flea beetles now I don't see any flea beetles and I do know that squash in general, or excuse me, sweet potatoes in general will start to get holes in them, just different bugs and stuff, but you will start to see an infestation on there. And this is something that can trigger you to start looking out for them. Now, do you guys think I handpick those? Absolutely not. They're too small. I can't handpick them. I mean, you'll look on the plant and there'll be like a hundred of them. So neem oil treatments, they work as well. So the good thing is, is once I start seeing one, I can start treating a lot of things at once and getting multiple treatment, multiple pests treated at the same time. So that kind of will help with basically knowing what you're looking for and knowing what the damage is. Now there's other stuff too, like if you go to the tomatoes and stuff, and if I don't have it, I can't show you, but 
truth to be told, I probably do have it because I always have some kind of damage. Well, I just looked at my tomatoes and I don't see it, but I was looking for stink bug damage. But as these things come across, because we'll start getting more and more damages throughout the year, I'll probably do another follow-up video to this because this is like super important stuff. Well, what do you know? We've got another cucumber. I got to stay on top of these bad guys. Sorry for the intermission, but this is fairly important. These little pickling cucumbers are my favorite by far. They're super juicy and sweet and crispy and just excellent for eating and pickling, of course, go by the name. But um, yeah, so when we're doing these things and we're out taking care of our garden, this is one thing that is gonna really help move your garden again to another level because you don't have to wait and ask people what it is. You have a notion of what to do and then you can kind of take care of it on hand. Now there's other pests like the cabbage looper and aphids, and I'm aware of all of that stuff. And as I see it, I'll try and bring the, the different bugs and pests to you and this, how to tell what damage it is. But for right now, this is what I have in my garden. And I think once you start to get this under control, it's just another piece to the puzzle to get rid of. You can start to just get these pests under control, get them out and you can produce more because what's happening is every time this pest chews on this plant right here, it's losing steam and it's starting to try to rebuild instead of reproduce. And we don't want that. So we can stay on top of it more, starting with your hand picking, get yourself some gloves if you don't want to touch them and just hand pick, hand pick, hand pick. And remember the Japanese beetles, they're super easy to get in the morning and the afternoon. And as you saw in the middle of the day, they're kind of tough, but they'll all be back. I'll come get them about five or six o'clock tonight and pick them out. It's kind of like a daily activity. It is what it is. But um, these, this will definitely help you in your garden and help you produce more. Good.